<laughs> it's like uh, running. Hi. From... <laughs> It's going to take a while. It's going to take a few seconds for people to um, to get here. I mean, they're not as fast as you are. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's yeah. Sorry, I had to upload some other stuff. Okay, great. But I added all your images. They're all here. I just made them live. Oh, you had to. I yeah, didn't I just, see them. I'm I know, sorry. I, didn't I know. See I just, them. Yeah, because it doesn't say no, anything. You know, it's great. Yeah. What? You know what's great about WizIQ is what? that you can have animated GIFs. Um, in other platforms, you can't. So I think about that. Oh, you can. Very nice. What do you mean? Oh, you can have animations, of course, if you want to. Sure, you can. Yeah, but in other platforms, you can't. So I am oh, excited about that. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Hi, right. everyone. How are you doing? Okay, if you could just add hello, everyone, and welcome back. And if you didn't join us in the uh, previous session, uh, this is Nelly. It's not Shelly, and Shelly's there. Uh, you can see her image there in the on the webcam. And a little bit about our <laughs> yes, presenters. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, there's Shelly. There she is, right there, and there I am. And there are our presenters. They're from around the globe, and we're going to go right through to the next session. So, Shelly, I don't want to take any of your time. Um, so I'll let you start. Hi everyone, welcome to the Spring Vlog Festival. Really excited to be here. I want to talk to you, Dr. Nelly uh, provided nice feedback about what the history of blogging was. And it's really great that we're gathering here today and talking. Hi everyone, welcome to the Spring Vlog Festival. Really excited to be here. I want to talk to you, Dr. Nelly uh, provided nice feedback about what the history of blogging was. And it's really great that we're gathering here today and talking about blogging because yesterday we didn't only um, celebrate Dr. Ludmila's birthday but it was the internet's birthday and how old was the internet that we celebrated how many years old and the great thing about it is that 25 yes melanie yay so today i want to talk to you about exciting things that you probably don't realize that a blogging has turned into what our students and what our learners are doing now blogging is not what you think it's not the way that it's been and it's changing because the internet continues to grow and it evolves and it evolves so um what i'm going to go ahead and do is is a talk about that but i'm really excited uh dr nelly invited me to be a part of this and to be working with Sylvia because they're wonderful, incredible people and it's great that we have this event to be sharing. I'm going to try to end a little bit early so that way we don't go over somebody else's time and you have time to transition there. So if I go a little fast, I'm, oh, I'm definitely that's, sorry about that's that. That's the internet. <laughs> um, yeah, that is you. Let me go ahead. Why is not my Just, thing um, big? Hmm. Um, Oh, I don't know why it says that you're you're me. But I'm not. As, I, I could come back if you want. As but, the video. Um, no, it's just the way it was set up. Me. But it's okay. But it says that you're me. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. Well, actually, there are two of uh, us. Just, you know, just if it's anything. clicked off, I'm sure people can anything. see me. So. <laughs> no, it's just but confusing because okay, it says so under you, it the, says Shelly Sanchez. Um, but we see you, Shelly. Uh, but to we let you know a little about and, me, you can uh, just Shelly get rid of my, Oh, I see what you mean. I'll get rid of my yeah. image there. Okay. I don't know why either. That's very strange. But I'm happy. I shall let you know a little about me. Okay. Well, hi everyone. So, just to let you know a little about me, I am a teacher trainer. You can find my information shellytarot.com. I've been all around the world. I train teachers. My wonderful um, ch trainer for my CELTA. I have my master's in ESL. I currently live in Texas, but I've lived in Germany. I stayed in Athens for a while with Marissa and 
Danita, who you see at South Athens, and she was my CELTA trainer, so I do have my CELTA, and I've lived also in Oklahoma, and I've been to over 26 countries to train, but one of the things that I love to do in my background, my, um, my degree is in communication, and that's what I started in, researching the way that people communicate and the way people communicate online, so I'm very, very passionate about this because this is the way we learn. This is our daily ritual. Every single day, all of us share micro bits. We share short narratives of our lives with someone else. And if you think about it, whether it be through a text message, so it could be through a text message that you shared something about your life with somebody else, and whether it be in your country, or even if you did this on Facebook, or on Twitter, or on a blog, you share, and this is part of all of our rituals, and our students' rituals, and the sad part about it is that it doesn't become part of what we learn in schools, and it's important, especially if you're an English language teacher, this is the way we communicate now. So um, if you're looking in the chat box and it says Shelly Sanchez Terrell, that's Dr. Nelly. So um, anything typed in there is Dr. Nelly, by the way, so you don't get confused. We're going to see what blog, reblog, all of these terms mean because this is the way we blog now. Technology, it evolves every day. Our devices dictate the way that we share stories, but also we dictate the way that technology transforms and evolves. And because of that, literacy, the way we communicate, language is developing and more words, it's getting shorter and, and there's acronyms, but it's not necessarily getting shorter. I saw this cartoon the other day, and I thought it was really, really funny. It said, uh, somebody posted up and it said, www dot. Um, instead, he said, I blog at World Wide Web dot. And then he said, Shelly Terrell, oh, you know, it could be Shelly Terrell dot com. And the person next to him in the comic said, it's not World Wide Web. Why would you say that? It's WW, and he said, because World Wide Web is shorter. If I say World Wide Web dot, it's shorter than WW dot. And if you think about it, it was like, hmm, you're right, because to say WWW is a lot more syllable than World Wide Web. So there are habits that we get into, and, and we don't really reflect on them, so it's important that we reflect on them so we can integrate it into our teaching, but that way because we can reflect on what we do, how these become our routines and how we communicate. So our students still write in pen and paper, and we still write in pen and paper, but these are other ways that we also uh, communicate and we read. We read through different devices. I have my iPad mini here or we'll read text messages, and we read here uh, different on our cell phones, and also through our laptops. So these are different ways that we communicate, we read, we write, and what does this all look like? Well, and it, it doesn't mean that literacy is going down. Well, according to David Crystal, who is one of the most famous linguists in the world, and who I absolutely adore and love because he says wonderful things about all this technology, and according to him, he says that people, and Dr. Nelly was talking about this, she was talking about how we write diaries, and a lot of teachers and adults say, oh, and my, I've had my parents in Germany that when I was trying to integrate technology and they say text messaging, text messaging makes my son or daughter stupid and that's actually not the case. In fact, David Crystal says Jane Austen who is known for diary writing and keeping a diary every day and people say it's so sad our students don't keep a diary every day. He says yes they do. It's called a blog and they do this in several different ways and in fact because they type on the internet and they work through a computer, they type more, they write more than Jane Austen could have ever written her whole entire life. So the technology makes it to we're digesting and we're actually involved and immersed in reading and writing every single day. Our students are immersed in literacy more than we could have ever been.
And because it's not with books, and because it doesn't look big, and because it looks like chunks, we think that that's less. But in fact, that makes us smarter. The chunks make us smarter. Because if we digest language through chunks, then our brain actually remembers it. Uh, sometimes too much on a page, you might be looking at the slide and say, oh my gosh, Shelley Terrell made this horrible mistake of putting a lot of word on a text, on a slide. But actually, um, it's because our brains find this a lot more taxed than if we have something really small like this. He says computer literacy is replacing book literacy and digital writing makes it to where we do this more. So look at the places that you're on. So I'm on a lot of different social networks. You have Facebook.com. Um, so Facebook, if you're on Facebook, look at the way it looks. We read. We don't read anymore necessarily from left to right. We do, but we read more from up to down. At Twitter, we read up to down. Look at Google.com, a Google Plus. You read up to down, and then even you know you can have columns, and you read up to down in the columns. Look at a blog, you read up to down. What are we doing? We're scrolling and we're scanning. If you look at text messages, you read up to down. Um, so with any of these new types of ways that we're every single day reading and digesting and participating in our own literacy, we read in streams. That's what it's called. It's called streaming. And we scan. We are practicing scanning every single day. That's what our students do. They are experts at scanning. This is something that they can do quite well. We summarize every single day. They have to take something that they're thinking, something huge, and they have to put in 140 characters and 200 and 160 characters. They have to make it short in Instagram and in Tumblr and all of these. We're making smart, uh, we're making shorter, shorter um, narratives. We're sharing bite-sized narratives. And over a length of time, such as Facebook, you get these small narratives. And you can even have a video at the end of the year. And it puts them all together with your pictures and with your videos and those you connect with. And what it does is it shows you a bigger picture. This was your life on social media. You could do this on Instagram. And you can even do this with Google Video. And it's exciting because all these narratives we share every single day with people around the world or with our relatives or even in text messages and stuff, they make a bigger portion. We get to reflect on this. We get to see it's multimedia and it's visual. So when we're thinking about the World Wide Web and it's evolving, what is it doing? Well, what it's doing is it's evolving. It's growing. It's changing. What we used to be able to do in 1992 when there was the first uh, blogs before 1992 is so much different than when we can do now with 3.0 and then we're going to 4.0. And what it is is it's evolving and changing to where we can connect more because that's what we want to do. We want to connect faster. We want to be wonderful at illustrating. We want to be really, really um, incredible at putting pictures. We not only want to put pictures, we want filters. We want it to look like we're photographers. We not only want to have videos, we want to look like, we want to edit our videos and we want to make them look super, super cool. So these are things that we are doing. How many do you know and how many do you use? Uh, so if you can write in the chat box how many of these you use. If you use Vine, if you have a YouTube account, um, if you use a Tumblr, if you've ever participated in the mean, if you've ever posted or created an animated GIF, if you've ever done a vlog. A vlog is a video log. What do we call an audio log? What do we call a video log is when you go and you just have videos and every single day you give a video and it's sort of like a diary in a way except it's all through video. I did this one year with the 30 Girls Challenge. Um, uh, which is one of my projects that Sylvia is going to talk about next. Um, you call it a podcast, yes. So you have a podcast, and that's what you do. Uh, one of the things is also that you have microblogging. Microblogging is Twitter. It's where you have 140 characters. It's where you have a little short. Instagram could be considered microblogging as well. What is reblogging? Reblogging is when you take 
something that somebody else has created and what you do is you repost it and I'll show you this is something that our students are doing on Tumblr it's very very popular millions are doing this quad blogging quad blogging is when you get people together for classes and you focus one is the main focus class of the week and then the three support them they add comments they have a conversation and then you can go so these are some of the new ways that you're seeing blogging has evolved into I really love what Alan November said and <laughs> reblogathorium that's awesome Marissa I have to see that you should add that in the chat box and then share it with me on Twitter later because I haven't seen any teachers use this so that'd be exciting um, Alan November who's very very incredible education technologist, one of the forerunners, and he's actually someone that a lot of people go to. He's written a lot of books, and he says, teachers now need to say, uh, instead of saying hand to in, to start saying publishing it, and publish it. And for language teachers especially, this is very important, because language, if we're going to evolve, our students want to be shown. A lot of times we think, oh, they don't speak English, in our class they don't participate, they don't want to be published. They don't want their mistakes published. You're wrong because once they go outside the classroom, they're on Facebook, they're on Twitter, they're on Instagram, and they don't care about their mistakes. They are publishing and they're showing all their peers. It's something that Jane McGonigal said recently with uh, Game Based Learning is she said, People are not prone to laziness. People are prone, are, are, um, they're more into hard work. But it has to be work that matters to them. And right now, in many of our classes, it isn't work that matters to them. So I'm on Tumblr, and this is the way I use Blur. We used it for the 30 Goals Challenge, and we have a lesson plan a day. And this is what we publish. But the way that I use Tumblr is very different than the way that our students use Tumblr. And I'm not talking about how students use blogs that we start with them, because it's very different. Instead, a lot of them um, already started blogging. So Melanie, your experience is not something that's that's bad. I, I mean, it's, it's shocking, because your students probably do this every day already. But it looks very different. So if you're starting a student blog, you may notice things, but it's good to understand why. Because there's a whole amount of blogging going with their bar students. This is what it looks like. So what they do is, this is what reblog looks like. They take an animated GIF. I'm not assigning homework tonight. So this one's called Lay Malicious. He created it himself. This is the tags he used. This is what it looks like. You notice how that Tumblr looks so much different than the way that I used the Tumblr. And this is what they're doing. They're taking animated GIFs. And so he puts this one. He says, this is how I feel when my teacher says, I'm not assigning homework tonight. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what that looks like. So let me go ahead and show you what it looks like in this side. And maybe I can play that. Or maybe not. <laughs> okay, let me go ahead and try it over here because it did work. I saw it work earlier. We're going to put it here. Why isn't it working? It was working. Come on, work for me, please. Wrong one. Okay. Oh, maybe I need to press that. No, I need to press. Hmm. It's supposed to be playing for you. It's a man dancing. Hmm. Okay, so it is not working, but anyway, he's supposed to be dancing. So that's what he's saying. He's saying this is the way that I feel when my teacher says I am not assigning any homework tonight. And then he's dancing. He's like, woohoo, I'll do the dance for you. He's like, yeah. That's the way he feels. But then he says, his teacher says, so that you can study for the test I'm giving you tomorrow. And then he's like this. So this is with the animated GIF. And they do a lot of things like this. They'll say things. This is how I feel when my boyfriend calls me. This is how I feel when, um, this is like when I go to the prom and it's like, get down. And then a chaperone comes and I'm like, 
So this is the way they express themselves, and they do this every single day. And what happens is they'll take the same animated GIF, and they'll do different expressions like that. So when you look at it, um, they give their own. Look at this. When it says 78,000 notes, that means that 78,000 people responded to this. So this is the audience for the blog. Because now we think, you know, if I get a thousand, two thousand hits a day, I'm like, wow, that's exciting. They are getting 78,000 or more. How do they do this? This is what it looks like. It even tells you this person reblogged from this person. And this is the way they're communicating. This is the way blogging looks like. It's a whole phenomenon. And you can see what they do, and they put their own spin on it. It's fast. It's easy. They click reblog. It gives them the animated GIF, and they can do this all over again. So now it's your turn to see how difficult this says when you are doing this to see because we're always challenging students we're always saying oh we learn better we learn more but honestly it's it, it's so much difficult to do so what I want you to do is take this animated GIF and I want you to put inside the chat box your own spin. So the first GIF is when he's dancing, he's like, woohoo! And so you want to put when my boss says, it could be your director, it could be your principal, it could be your mom, it could be your sister, whatever you want to say, whoever says, and then you're happy and excited. And then when you go over here, but then they say, and then it makes you go, so go ahead and do this. I can do it. For example, I'll do my pug. When my, okay, Sarah says when my boss says you can leave today, but you have to work the whole weekend. Exactly. Wonderful, Sarah. Okay. And What kind of other ones? That's perfect. That's a great example. I can put example when uh, Roscoe licks me. I'm like, woohoo, lots of licks from Roscoe, my pug. And then... But then I realized he just finished eating um, the the Vaseline or <laughs> or worse stuff than that, uh, which happens a lot. I'm like, oh, stinky dog. <laughs> okay, so Nancy says when my boss says let's design a new session of courses, but then he says, oh, can I have the course next week? Yes. Melanie, when my boss says no school today because of snow, but then says we'll make it up in May. Exactly, yes. So, does this produce good language? Could you put this up in a board as a prompt, and could you get your students to come up with language from this? Yes, you can. This is a great way to get them talking and thinking, and they will be able to do this faster and quicker than you. It's a great way for them to have emergent language, like uh, Luke says Reddings and Scott Thornberry when they talk about um, dogma. What uh, George Bernard Shaw, which is one of my favorite directors and, and, and persons and uh, people in theater, is imitation is not just a sincerest form of flattery, it's a sincerest form of learning. All of this, we are copying from each other, we're modeling language, we're modeling how we share stories, because we like to share stories every single day. And when we learn from each other, then we also can do this not only in writing and reading, but we do this through action. All of this is action oriented as well. So it's sort of like TPR in a way, total physical response. Not only do we reblog and everything like this, but this impacts our behavior, it impacts our language, it impacts when we're together and we're speaking face to face. We call this a meme. A meme can be uh, something like an animated GIF that goes viral. The idea is it goes viral. It's an idea, behavior, style that spreads from person to person within the culture. So recently, one of the things that we did, I'm going to go uh, to the next presentation, where is it here, um, is that we also, it, it acts as a unit of carrying cultural idea symbols. It, it reflects our different types of rituals and things like that. Um, it comes from the Greek word, uh, Marissa and Sylvia might know this, to imitate, mimi. Um, and it was coined by Richard Dawkins in 1975. So things, what does this look like? Well, it looks like this. Can you name these famous names? Um, something like the Harlem Shake, 
it went viral. Lots of people did videos, but not only videos, lots of people in real life did these. You might recognize these. What is this called? Anyone know what this is called? Or with this language, it could be an acronym that we use again and again. It could be a saying that just comes out when we're talking. It could be something like this. Anyone know what any of these are? You can type it in the chat box. Guess what any of these viral. Yes, the, uh, Ella the Shake. Yes, do you remember that one? Roll on the floor laughing. Yes, Nancy, exactly. How about, uh, does anyone know from this show where that comes out in? Or this one. Do you know this person? He was very famous. He was all over ELT. Lots and lots of teachers use this as a teaching um, aid and, and way to get their uh, pen. Yes, Nancy Matt. Matt dancing. And he did all these videos. And people would come up and they would dance too. They would randomly dance. Where the hell is Matt? Exactly, Michaela. And how about this one? A lot of you may have done this at conferences as well. Because they have them now at teacher conferences. It's the thriller, but yes, exactly. You can do it's a flash mob. So, a lot if you've ever been in a flash mob, that's a kind of meme as well. It's a viral activity. And so, we did that at Ayatefel. We did that at the Harlem Shake. We did this past Ayatefel. Now, we're going to have a new Ayatefel. But they've done this at ISTE. They've done this conferences worldwide. And they even did it for a Ben Howard video where they had a flash mob. So, that it's something that we know. We, we we associate and even we know it so it's not separate I don't like the idea where we think that things like this are just students and kids because we know it as well we participate in these and sometimes we even use it already as teaching mechanisms um, this one is did I do that that's actually from Urkel uh, so things in TV shows can go viral viral as well um, these can be memes one of the things our students are doing now that's being part of blogging is an image meme and this is where they take a image and it's really kind of scary in a way so something that's in our culture yes Tom that's a great one the hokey pokey um, yes we are kids Dr. Nelly we are we like having fun teachers especially we love to have fun which I think is great because learning can be fun it's hard and difficult but when we're having hard ships and difficulties and going through a journey to get us through we need this we need ways to express ourselves and have that humor added in so that way we can get through the tough hurdles so we can say hey yeah we're learning a lot but we're also enjoying this so these are some of the image memes you might see that you're familiar with and nowadays the people will take a picture online and they can make it into a meme they can take something that's in a news report like this woman here she was actually in the newscast and she said ain't nobody got time for that and she became viral now the poster everywhere millions are starting to post and, and, and of our students as well, they're starting to make different types of language or reflect the way they feel or the way that they have different experiences in life with these image memes. Um, this little baby, a mom put a picture of her. You can go to Meme Generator or Know Your Meme and you'll find out the stories behind these and then they become something that gets reposted. Like the Keep Calm. This is something if you know the history of Keep Calm, this is back in UK history. So it's it's really smart as well because you can get things from the past, relics from the past. This would be a great way to talk about or to teach about the war and history as well with the posters. There's a story behind this and so we can use this as good teaching. So you've seen a lot the keep calm this one that I made except when it's your birthday then boogie on that's the one I made. It's a keep calm is the same and it's sort of like a gap fill when you think about it talking during a test. Ain't nobody got time for that so the saying is ain't nobody got time for that you fill in the first gap. Um, then this one success baby. So success baby is trying to say something that goes on and then you get success out of it. So it looks like it's going wrong but then you have success. So don't know a question on a test, answer is in another question. Yes, yes. Okay, so we go on and now it's your turn. Recreate one. Take any of these. The keep calm might be the easiest one for you. Um, so why don't you try in the chat box. I want to see some of this. <laughs>
add it in the chat box. You'll get back to me when I, you think of something. <laughs> uh, see. Uh, so, or somebody, something where you have ain't nobody got time for that. Something even with your students. Take a nap. Ain't nobody got time for that. You can even tell your students that. Napping in my class, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> you can post that up. You're telling the rules. Some of the teachers tell the rules this way. And it's a good way. It makes it fun. Your students will actually listen to this about you saying rules like this versus if you're there and you're sharing with them a whole bunch of boring rules. How is it more likely that they're going to listen to a meme and see a meme and see uh, things like that? Ain't nobody got time for that. They're going to like that. That's going to... Uh, um, okay. Keep calm and you'll get it exactly for task taking. Maybe they're going to take their... Um, their, their, their Te their te TESOL tasks or the IELPS or something like that. You can even use it with the adults. Um, you can give test taking skills. You can say keep calm and yeah, exactly. To and it's great to have you, by the way, Tony. It's a it's really great. You're so smart. <laughs> Uh, keep calm and use a pencil. Yes, Melanie, exactly. When they're freaking out about a test, and you know, these are some tips you can do. Or even with the success baby, you can even teach them that kind of tip. You can say, you don't know what something is. Um, you know, it's within the sentence itself, um, or it's within the passage, you know. So you can give them different types of things as well they can learn from. So what is the learning value? Well, it teaches about culture, and if you look at CLIL, one of the elements of CLIL is to teach culture. And a lot of times we think, how do you integrate this? Well, within a meme, there is that cultural element. It is something that's passed down and it's global. So things like the success baby or the keep calm, I use that. I'm in the US. Maybe you've used that. You're in Greece. You're in Turkey. It's global. So there's a lot of things that you can use with that. Um, it teaches grammar structures. So you can even focus on the grammar structures. Ain't nobody got time for that. What could we learn from that? We can learn about contractions. Ain't is ain't a word. Maybe how words evolve. So you can focus. Keep calm and what is that teaching us? Um, the success baby. You, there's so many things you can show. Prepositions, prepositional phrases. We can pay attention. English as a lingua franca. We can show our students a language that is developing that they can use within their everyday, the vernacular. And we can show how English, as Penny Err talks about, is evolving. It's becoming bigger. How around the world there are different phrases and stuff and how they can understand that. Idioms, the chunks language. It's a way for them to play with language. And when you play with language, that takes higher order thinking skills, like a critical thinking. So if you looked at the different examples, they were fun, but they challenge you. It took a while for you to think of them. So it's not easy learning. It's not in the bottom scale of learning. It's actually in the higher level of learning. Let's look at a beat log. So a video log. What is a video log? A video log is when we have different types. Our students are now video logging galore. There's millions of them out there, and they're getting followers, millions. So I think, you know, a lot of people say, Twitter, you got 48,000. Our students today, that's nothing. They have a million, 5 million. They're becoming viral themselves, 48,000 is not impressive. That's nothing. As you saw, when they got a reblog, they had 72,000 on a reblog. Something that Upsite Learning says is after 72 hours, we retain 90% of video versus text. That's one way to get us out of the textbook. So whenever we see a video opportunity where our students can grab their phones out now and they can take small videos, and now the great thing about video is smaller. It doesn't take that big type of memory. Instead, now you can have things where it actually is 30 seconds, 15 seconds, and even 6 seconds. Can you learn in 6 seconds? Yes, you can. I'm going to show you that. But first, one of the uh, longest ways that we live, uh, we learn, and, and the longest way that we've had video learning is through YouTube. We've all noticed YouTube, there's billions and billions of users on YouTube. YouTube is one of the oldest social networks. And I love teaching with YouTube. I love what Jamie um, 
uh, what Jamie does, Ketty, with uh, YouTube and how he's gotten lots of language teachers to use YouTube because YouTube is one of those that exists for a long time and it continues to grow with the trends. It adapts and makes room with the trends. Uh, this is one of my favorite. We call them YouTubers. So people on YouTube are YouTubers. You know who taught me about YouTubers? Mari, um, Mariana Smolsek. She's in Croatia and I was recently there doing um, a lot of the examples you see are when I was doing workshops and teaching kids in Croatia and Slovenia. And her nine-year-old and her six-year-old son came up to me and said, I'm a YouTuber. And I said, what? I was in this little town in Oculin and I love them. They're so cute. And they said, yes, do you know what a YouTuber is? And they spoke wonderful, beautiful English. They're from Croatia, nine-year-olds, a small little town in Croatia. There's not that many people there. There's probably 200, 500 people in here. And he tells me, you don't know what a YouTuber is? Duh, like that. And I just thought it was really incredible. And um, this is what YouTuber is. It's someone who has a video on YouTube. They have millions of users. You can hear, see here, um, this is one of my favorite ones. I listen to her all the time. She has 200 and 91,000 who subscribe. Her name is Glow Spingsta. She did it herself. Um, she does really funny videos. They're short videos. You see it's 4 minutes 57. She even does interviews. And she's a phenomenon. She's famous. Um, and she makes lots of money doing this. She makes more money than I do. And Mariana's sons spoke great English. They didn't even have any accents. And one of the reasons why is because they learned it through YouTube. So they had a lot of bits and phrases they learned as well. There's Vine. And with Vine, you can only make six seconds. But the most famous person on Vine or the people in Vine are not movie stars and celebrities like on Twitter. In fact, they are teenagers. Nash Greer, he's a North Carolina teen. And what he does, why is this? Thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, is he's a North Carolina teen, and he has more than five million followers. Five million people watch his vine. Uh, Megan Kalogny, she's a fashion and portrait photographer, and she ha does vines for more than sixty brands. She gets ten thousand uh, dollars to do these six-second videos. So our students, even without us, our learners without us are creating these videos and they're making it into a career, they're making money out of it. I think that's really smart. So what can we learn from them? Oh, how can we learn how to integrate this, to be motivating, to get our students, if they're doing this every day, Nash Grier and lots of them, they have it every single day and they go and they're posting six second videos then how can we integrate it into our subject? What if they were using six-second videos to talk about what the learning in our situation, to use that for language? And so Nash Grier, what he does is he has 217 posts, 217 six-second videos, 5.9 million ball, um, followers. He only follows 204. So let's learn from him. What can we see? Well, there's the ability to create viral action as well. One of them is through hashtags. So a lot of times they'll they'll put up these campaigns. Well, they'll replicate things. And we can then they replicate videos. What if we did something? And I'll show you how teachers have used this as, all, as well. And they had this one hashtag called Dance with Pets. And they had all of these people making videos. And it was from Ryan McHenry. Ryan McHenry had just gone through his five weeks. Oh, sorry. In Greece, that's not good. Five weeks of having cancer. So when he went up and he, he, uh, he had this Dance with Pets campaign. And I thought that was wonderful. A really great way to teach digital literacy, to teach digital citizenship, coming together for a cause and, and making someone feel good. So I like Vine. Vine, actually, when it comes with the comments, it says, say something nice to someone, which I love because they've considered thinking about how students are talking online and they want to propose that they're good digital citizens. So what can you learn and teach in six
well, there's quite a bit. General Electric has gone and they've created a hashtag called Six Second Science. They, what they do is they get people from around the world to show science concepts in six seconds. They even have, once a year, a science fair and they'll give money to some of the students who show some of the best six second videos of science. So that's a great way. You have thousands and thousands of people who are following. You have, look, they have 227,000 people who watch science in six seconds every day. How amazing is that? They have 189,000 reblogs, 189,000 people. General Electric has gone to repost cool science videos. That's amazing learning that's going on. Have English language teachers use it? Well, one of my favorite is Carolyn Leahy. She's in Spain and she's in Barcelona and she works at the directorshare.es. I met her as part of the 30 Goals Challenge and that's when I started to get really interested in Vine. Before I thought, Vine, six second videos, there's no way I could do that. What she does is she gets her students, she goes and she posts different idioms, but then she, if you go to directorshare.es, you'll see her student examples, how they go and they show in six seconds different types of idioms. They learn the idioms in the process, but one of the things you can do is you can take these videos. You can post them anywhere. You can embed them. They even become animated GIFs. You can share them with your students. And how powerful is that? Instead of you saying, okay, we're going to learn the idiom, no use crying over spilling milk, just show them one of these and start up with this. Show them a video, and that's it. And then we get the conversation started from there. And how many of them are going to see all the students do it and say, I want to do one teacher, I want to do one teacher. And they can because it's only six seconds. There's another thing you should know about blogging, and this is quad blogging. This was uh, created by Deputy Mitchell on Twitter. He's David Mitchell. And this is what it looks like. So you, if you're trying to find a way, this is, so what I'm trying to do is show you how blogging has evolved, the different ways that we can blog with our students and the different ways we can get them to become writers and in the habit of taking the things from our subject and when they can come and they can use this to, um, for our work, to reflect on our work, to reflect on language, how we can do this instead of regular homework. And I don't like to use the word homework. I like to use the word challenge or mission. This is your mission. Make a six second video. Or here's your mission. Take this animated GIF and recreate a prepositional phase or something. And then this is how we work. Um, and they find this more motivating. So with quad blogging, if you're looking to get into um, a class project or even with your students, one of the things you can do is you have four classes. Uh, you can even do this with a set of four bloggers or with a set of bloggers. So what it is is basically each week you have one that is the highlight. You can have one Tumblr, one kid blog, one edgy blog. Um, that's going to be the highlight. That's the post we focus on. And they accomplish the task. And then the other three leave comments, ask questions, spur on the discussion. Then the second week, it's the second student or the second class. So you can do this either as a class or you can do this as students. Then the third week is class three and so on. So each week there's a focus and there's an ongoing conversation. It's a way to motivate. How do we do this? Well, you can go to quadblogging.com. It's free to sign up. I believe in free stuff, so I share everything that's free. One of the great things about Vine it, and Instagram, because you can do 15 second videos with Instagram. I find it a little bit easier for me. My students love using Instagram as well. I just recently tweeted, retweeted something about using Instagram from Andre Spain in Germany. Kids love using Instagram. Um, my um, boyfriend, <laughs> who's here somewhere, uh, he's asleep though, it's really early. Um, he uses it with his 178 students. He has an Instagram account. He also has a Vine account. So, um, and his students, they're 11, 12, 13 years old, and they, the parents even look at this, and they get to see what's going on in the classroom. They respond when he goes on trips. We went to New York. He took pictures of Deltas. He teaches English language learners. And the parents would write and say, oh, you're the favorite teacher. And they would respond. He would put a picture of a Delta. And, and so the students love this. They would interact, and they would respond versus co in the comments. So instead of answering questions from a book, 
the answer questions as comments on the Instagram. Well, you can go to quadvolume.com to do this. When we think of these types of learning, when we think of this type of learning and the technology, I really love what John Naisbitt says. And he says that the most exciting breakthroughs of the 21st century is not because of the technology, but it's because of what it means to be a human being. And all of these ways, this technology, even our rituals every single day, how many days do you go without using your phone? How many hours within a day do you go without using your phone? Neither do your students. And, and maybe we find that kind of sad. We find it sad that most of our students would rather uh, be on the phone than have a book that they read in a corner for an hour. But the only way that we get to influence that behavior, the only way we get to make an impact and have them learn about balance and the way that we learn about balance is if we teach with this. Because if we take it out of the classroom, if we don't teach with it, if we don't use the tools that they're using to share stories, then we are separating ourselves. We're saying that school is irrelevant. School doesn't apply to their lives. And that when they come to school, they have to turn off and they have to do something, learning that is completely different than what they're used to and then what they want to do. If we went to school and they told us, here's a rock and here's some flowers and you have to create dye and that's the way you're learning, like the cavemen, then we wouldn't respond to that either. And so I think it's important that when we're teaching language, we have to teach language in the way that our students are connecting with each other. And these are meaningful ways. They want to publish online. They want to make videos. They want to write stories. Wow! If we can get our students to do that with a language, with English, or even our subject, whether it be math or science, and they're doing this every day, and they're reblogging that, that's amazing. So today, our students, with all of this technology, these free apps, these free tools, even on their cell phone, which is a much more powerful computer than any of the computers we ever started with, they are videographers, they are producers, they're directors, they're authors, they're photographers, they're photographers, sorry, <laughs> commentators, remixers, editors, because to make a six-second video, you have to edit that down a lot. These are great higher things, order skills, and very creative. And does it relate? It's better learning. It's what we are taught as teacher is the best kind of learning from people 60 years ago, 100 years ago. Vygotsky, Piaget, Banduda, modeling, um, chunks of language, co-learning, scaffolding, cognitive development. So with all of these technologies, we're showing a learning revolution. We're showing that students don't want to only study for a test. Students don't only want to do book work. Students are saying that is not good learning. Instead, we want to show our talents. Instead, we want to create with multimedia. We want to digest a lot of bite-sized information. And then we want to go and connect, and we want to respond, and we want to say, yay, you're doing a good job. We want to follow people. And we want to say, wow, we love your work. You're 12 just like me. You're 13 just like me. You're 17 just like me. But you're brilliant. You make great videos. You make great animation. You are a fantastic blogger. You reblog, and it's amazing. I connect with it. I laugh with it. I love it. We want to communicate quickly. We want to put our spin to our own content. We want to take what they created from a 12 year old, a 15 year old, a 16 year old, and we want to make it into something too. We want to be excited and say, wow, I love what you created. I love this animated GIF you created, and I want to put my own spin to it. When we use these kind of things on a teacher, uh, a teacher integrates this in the classroom. Um, and, you know, it, it's a shame because when we're in our, our different types of teacher training program, they don't get us. They don't even teach us about this. You are not going to find this presentation anywhere else. You're not going to find a presentation that tells teachers about reblogging or Tumblr or what our kids are doing. And I think it's sad. I think it's sad that when I went and I did my own research that I don't find any of it that I have to share this with you, and I'm one of the first people to ever share it with you, and why. One of the reasons why is because 
our teaching programs is a disconnect. It's not teaching us. Yes, it's having us learn from there and Vygotsky and Banduda and David Crystal and all of these great people, but they're not showing us what this means they're not showing us how language is developing we're not getting that connect and so as a teacher it's up to us to participate in these rituals to look at them and we don't have to be completely in tune or smart about it we don't have to know everything we can let our teachers teach us like nancy says some of her favorite teachers on youtube are her kids I really love what Robert John Meehan says. He says, if your actions in the classroom inspire children to achieve more, question more, and dream more, you are indeed worthy of the teacher, of the title of teacher. And so that's my challenge to you. Let's start looking even once a week, once a month, getting these types of teaching, this learning, this literacy that's going in the world and integrating it. Can we get our learners to do a six-second video? Yes. Can we get them to do a 30 second video? Yes. Can we take a meme? Can we put this in the classroom? And can we use that as our roles instead of giving them this big chunky, big code of conduct? Yes, we can. And and when they see that, they're going to respond and they're going to connect more. So I think it's really exciting we do that. You can find a lot of these resources. I've put a whole bunch of blogging ones here. It's in a pearl tree, which is a mind map. Um, and then, yes, Tony, uh, best teachers are rule breakers and secret. Exactly. A lot of times, and people get mad at me because I'm one of the creators of EdChat, which is one of the first, um, actually, educational um, um, chats on Twitter. And we want to ban me, so I'm very excited about that. And and a lot of times I'll say, yeah, I closed the door from my directors, and I hid, and I was secret. And uh, one of the reasons why is because my directors, uh, my principal would get mad. He would say, oh, you need to go, and and you need to go, and you need to uh, go ahead and um, take anyone you see on Facebook. He said, any of your students you see on Facebook, they're suspended from school. And I was thinking, what? I'm not going to suspend any of my students that have a Facebook account. That would be all of them. That's horrible. <laughs> so um, I don't necessarily agree with yeah I, I like what Tony says sometimes I'm a, um, a <laughs> rule breaker but it's not only that our students are tech savvy we can learn from them as well but we are every single day you train yourself with a mobile device in my class right now we're um, we're on a learning to go class and Sarah um, is one of the students that's on there and I don't know if some of my other students are in here as well and what we're learning is how every day we can train ourselves to do something. We can create a meme on our mobile device. And every day you can train yourself. Try something new on your mobile device. Try something. Try reblogging, making one of these animated things. And our six-second video. Now I start doing 15-second videos on Instagram. And it may be a little bit um, difficult, but I'm learning. Um, and it is difficult, but when we do this, there's a lot of things that you can do. And this, we are still accepting, um, just a little about me, we're accepting, I teach online, I teach millions actually online, <laughs> or actually hundreds of thousands. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. I was in the top 1% of SlideShare, which I was so excited about that, because that means I was with Guy Kawasaki. And it's all teachers learning for free, so you can find all of this stuff absolutely for free um, if you go to the slide share address so I'll get you my slide share address um, and, and you can download this presentation and many others if you have any questions you're more than welcome to ask me right now uh, we only have about seven minutes um, but this is what we're learning in the course right now so you can go there it's itdi.pro um, we're learning through Google Community, so that's something that you can sign up for. I love okay. IPDI. Um, and that's me. So thank you so much for coming. And if you have any questions or any kind of, then I'll give you a... Um, thank you. <laughs> um, I'm in the background. So I'm Nelly, and I'm in oh, the but that's okay. Uh, we here. should be James in as anybody online, and and which is uh, something that maybe we should talk about, how you can be anyone you want to be um, through technology. 
So right now I'm in a Shelly. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Shelly. Um, thank you everyone for joining us. And we're going to get ready for the next session. The next session is with Sylvia. Thank you, Tom. Tom has added uh, the link there, Shelly and everyone. That's where you can get all the presentations. You don't need to go everywhere. You can stay in one place. Uh, hello, Rick. Stay in one place um, for the uh, weekend and not run around so uh, there it is there's the link to the blog festival and blog 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 about this as well as tweet to your friends so that they can join us too thank you let them know about the great learning you're doing so i'll let you go now so we can make it to sylvia's <laughs> bye everyone